We like to give you a choice. We do. You can choose whether you want to listen to Jamie Raskin or... Um, Miss Fox. I'll go with Raskin. It's on the subject of healthcare and Medicare. So, yeah, Thank definitely you. go with Raskin. You? Right. Our next item for consideration... Is HR... 6283, the Delinking Revenue from Unfair Gouging Act. The clerk will please designate the bill. HR 6283, the Delinking Revenue from Unfair Gouging Act, a bill to improve services provided by pharmacy benefit managers. Without objection, the bill should be considered as read and open for amendment at any point. Without objection, so ordered. The chair recognizes himself to offer an amendment in the nature of substitute. The clerk will please designate the amendment. An amendment in the nature of a substitute offered to H.R. 6283 as offered by Mr. Comer of Kentucky. Without objection, the amendment is considered as read and the substitute will be considered as original text for the purposes of further amendment. I recognize myself for five minutes for a statement on the bill and amendment. Rarely a day goes by that I don't hear from constituents concerned about the high cost of prescription drugs. I'm pleased that today we have an opportunity to both address and lead this issue, which is so important to many Americans. H.R. 6283, the Delinking Revenue from Unfair Gouging, or Drug Act, will make much needed changes to the pharmacy benefit market. Consolidating PBMs was supposed to help negotiations uh, and reduce the cost of prescription drugs for patients. I might add, the consolidation of pharmacy benefit managers, or PBMs, uh, that industry in the industry has left us with just three PBMs controlling 80% of the market. Instead of uh, reducing the cost of prescription drugs for patients, some PBMs have, have leveraged their control of the prescription drug market to control drug price, to control drug prices, rebates, pharmacy reimbursements, insurers, pharmacy networks, and formularies for financial gain. PBMs currently operate as middlemen between health insurers, drug manufacturers, and pharmacies in an unnecessarily complex prescription drug supply chain. In doing so, some PBMs have increased the overall cost of prescription drugs and hurt consumer choice. Furthermore, by skimming discounts meant for local pharmacies, certain PBM practices drive up prescription drug uh, prices for patients. Some PBMs have been found civilly liable for these practices. That's why we're here today, to consider part of the Drug Act to help curb these practices. We are specifically considering subsection D, which would ensure that PBMs contracting with carriers that provide federal health benefit plans are prevented from engaging in many of these harmful practices. This legislation would ensure that covered PBM revenues are limited to fair market value service fees and would prohibit PBMs from charging health plans more than what they ultimately pay to pharmacies. The bill also prevents a PBM from steering beneficiaries towards pharmacies owned by the PBM, ensuring a consumer can go to the pharmacy of their choice. Finally, subsection D of this legislation provides enforcement authorities for the subsection of the Office of Personnel Management, including the ability to collect $10,000 daily civil penalty for noncompliance. My amendment in the nature of substitute offers necessary technical edits and expands on the legislation by allowing OPM to deposit any collected monetary penalties into the FEHB fund. I am pleased the committee is considering such important legislation to rein in these PBMs and curb these abusive practices. This legislation is supported by several organizations including the National Federation of Federal Employees, the Association of National Active and Retired Federal Employees, the National Association of Manufacturers, the Community Oncology Alliance, Transparency Rx, the PBM Accountability Project, the Association of Accessible Medicines, Affirmed Rx, Patients Rising Now, and the Biotechnology Innovation Organization. I urge my colleagues to support this very important and bipartisan bill I now yield to the ranking member for his opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to commend you and the Oversight Republicans for joining with us, the Oversight Democrats this Congress, in exploring ways to increase Americans' access to affordable medication. We held two bipartisan hearings last year to evaluate how certain pharmacy benefit 
managers or PBMs practice, uh, practices may harm patients' timely and affordable access to medicine, hurt independent pharmacies, and restrict provider care. The bill we're discussing today is intended to build upon these efforts and solve some of the problems we identified, but it's difficult to fully solve a problem before we completely understand it. Our hearings last year made clear that above all else, PBMs are operating in a black box. Both Congress and the public need a lot more clarity into how PBMs operate and how their practices might operate in conjunction with other actors in the prescription drug market, including big pharma, to make it harder for patients to get the care that they need at an affordable cost. Last Congress, Oversight Democrats published our findings from a three-year investigation <clears throat> into drug manufacturers that revealed how big pharma engaged in anti-competitive behavior to keep drug prices artificially high and specifically targeted the U.S. prescription drug market for price increases. The findings from this report allowed congressional Democrats and President Biden to address these concerns in the Historic Inflation Reduction Act, including by allowing Medicare to negotiate prices for some of the most expensive drugs in the country directly with manufacturers so big pharma can no longer exploit American taxpayers and patients. This has allowed us to dramatically reduce prescription drug prices uh, for certain drugs. For example, for insulin, I had constituents who were spending $1,000 a month on their insulin shots as diabetics, and now that's capped at $35 a month in the Medicare program. And at the same time, we saved the taxpayers billions of dollars by letting the market work and allowing the government to negotiate with big pharma for lower prices. Unfortunately, there's not a similarly comprehensive report on, P on PBM behavior or approach to the problem. Without a thorough understanding of how PBMs operate, I worry we can't know to what extent this bill will actually address the problems it tries to solve. That's why I plan to introduce um, a few amendments designed to help health plans and the federal government better understand the industry and PBM's potentially misaligned incentives by establishing effective reporting and disclosure mechanisms for PBMs. Bringing sunshine to the system will enable Congress to craft and implement effective solutions. I believe these amendments are necessary to effectively address what we've come to learn about P PBM's role in the healthcare system. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Gentlemen, yields back. Before I recognize Dr. Fox, I ask unanimous consent to enter the following letters of support into the record, a letter from One Oncology, a letter from Pharma, a letter from the National Association of Manufacturers, a letter from the Association for Accessible Medicines and Biosimilars Council, two letters from Transparency Rx, a letter from the PBM Accountability Project, a letter from Affirmed Rx, and a letter from the Community Oncology Alliance. Without objection, so ordered. The chair now recognizes Dr. Fox from North Carolina for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Uh, Chairman Comer, we share an interest in effective management of the Federal Employees Health Benefits, FEHB program, and in delivering the best low-cost health care possible to Americans. I chair the Committee on Education and the Workforce, of which you are a member, and we've spent this Congress focused intently on improving transparency in health care and addressing the practices of pharmacy benefit managers, PBMs, in order to deliver lower health care costs to patients and plans. That's why I am proud of the House's broad bipartisan support for the Lower Cost, More Transparency Act legislation that will give employers the information they need to make informed health care purchasing decisions on behalf of their employees. And I look forward to continuing to work with our Senate colleagues to enact it this year. As a conservative, I'm always hesitant to invoke the powers of the federal government, particularly to intervene in private business ability to design their own contracts and determine fair compensation for their services. Overreach is all too easy, and I'm particularly concerned with such interventions in the commercial health care market. Congress does have a unique responsibility to ensure the FEHB program delivers the highest quality and lowest cost for federal workers. Tweaks to that program can reveal the consequences of proposals that some may desire to expand more widely. That is precisely what is before us today. The application of H.R. 6283, the Delinking Revenue from Unfair Gouging Act, or the Drug Act, to the FEHB program. 
The bill applies three significant changes to contracting for prescription drugs by FEHB plans, delinking a spread pricing ban and an anti-steering provision. Delinking is intended to ensure that there's no incentive for a PBM to select a higher list price drug in lieu of a lower net price drug. We want to ensure that PBMs share the same incentives to deliver the lowest net cost to the plans they serve. We also must ensure bureaucrats do not have too much authority to dictate how PBMs can be compensated. It's particularly important to tread carefully on spread pricing and on anti-steering provisions that may take away plan sponsors' ability to lower cost. Employers who act as fiduciaries and benefit providers for their employees deserve to have a full array of tools available to design their plans to benefit patients and keep premiums low. All of these changes are motivated by good intentions, but it's extremely important to move cautiously and avoid unintended consequences. While I'm aware that the Office of Personnel Management has stated that these reforms may reduce drug spending and premiums in the FEHB program, I believe it's important that the Congressional Budget Office share its analysis of the full financial impact of the legislation in short order. It's also very important that, as this language applicable perfected to address potential areas of improvement, I'm aware that there is too little free about the health care market in America. My North Star is restoring free market incentives and ensuring that the employer-sponsored health care so many Americans value is on a stable foundation for the future. Out of a willingness to work with Chairman Comer, on giving a trial to these policies in the unique FEHB market, I am voting today to support H.R. 6283. I'm open to additional good faith discussions with all stakeholders on each of the three pillars of this legislation, but believe significant more studies necessary before any consideration of similar reforms in the commercial market. It's vital that Congress enact PBM transparency legislation the Lower Cost, More Transparency Act into law now so that we can see the benefits of that data flow to patients and employers while revealing what additional action is needed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the time, and I yield back. Thank you. Do any other members wish to speak on the bill? Uh, yes. Well, well, I have an amendment at the desk, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Well, uh, we've still got some discussion on the oh. on the bill first. Mr. Uh, Chair, organize Mr. Burleson from Missouri for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to thank you for holding this markup today. And uh, we have a lot of issues that are facing American people, and the high cost of prescription drugs is certainly something that's worth tackling. However, I respectfully disagree on this bill that targeting PBM practices is the way to drive down costs and expand consumer choice. We all want to lower prescription drug prices, but the devil is in the details. Um, first, in the delinking, subsection D of this bill adds to the Federal Employee Health Benefits Act a new section that would implement delinking policies. Delinking is essentially the government stepping in and delinking what PBMs are allowed to charge from the list price to the net price. And while this sounds good on paper and may feel good in the short term, it only serves to increase premiums and raise costs for the patient. Senator Rand Paul recently commented on a Senate drug pricing bill that included delinking provisions explaining that like, and this is his quote, like so many misguided policies in Washington, this bill may actually raise drug prices. If that happens, just imagine the outcry for a single-payer health care system with government price controls. Maybe that's exactly what the left is betting on, that if drug companies have free reign, the American people will get fed up fast and demand a socialist paradise. Let's hope that they don't get their wish, end quote. And I certainly hope they don't get their wish either. Um, regarding the process and the cost, I have some concerns with the process as well as the potential cost of the bill. We've had two P PBM hearings in this committee already this year, and at no point did we hear from many of the groups that are, that are, in, that are going to be involved, many of the stakeholders. Why are we marking up a policy about which we have not had actual public discussion with the stakeholders involved and the federal agencies that might be impacted? Um, regarding the CBO, we have not seen 
as was mentioned, a CBO score of this language. Um, CBO scored this section of the, has, has, it has not scored this. Um, and what's complicating the matter is that there's 800,000 postal retirees who will be shifting to Medicare Part D this year. And the question is, has CBO scored how this language will impact the cost for those retirees? Additionally, um, the, the bill targets PBM's involvement in the public sector is counterproductive, in my opinion. For example, the Department of Labor's Inspector General found that the agency spent an extra $321 million over a five-year period on prescription drugs because they did not use a PBM. Free markets simply work better. PBMs use their economies of scale to drive down costs. In the same way that Walmart, we all know, does a great job of selling bulk things, but they do so at the benefit of the consumer by driving down costs. PBMs are paid based on performance. If they effectively secure savings from drug companies, they are paid more, and that's a good thing. The buying power of a PBM is one of the only remaining checks on drug companies' unlimiting pricing power. It's why you're seeing all of the ads that are being paid for by pharma targeting PBMs and supporting this bill. I'd suggest that if we're looking for solutions to combat skyrocketing drug costs, that we take a look at what our drug manufacturers are doing. And at the end of the day, I had the exact same opinion as probably most of the members are going to vote today. I, I originally used to think that PBMs um, were, were part of the problem. And, and, what I've, and after serving on the very board for an entire state, the state of Missouri, who had to purchase the insurance for the lives of over 100,000 people, I, I, my, my attitude changed. And, I, and I, I look at this and I think if I had been handcuffed in this way of negotiating with, with what I had to negotiate with, with the different insurance carriers and the pharmacy benefit managers, the only result would be an increase in premium prices for the lives of the insured people that I was purchasing insurance for. And so respectfully, I will be voting against the bill. Gentlemen yields back. Uh, seeing that no other members want to speak on the underlying bill, I now recognize our ranking member for an amendment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I want to thank the gentleman from Missouri for his thoughtful comments on that. Um, this proposed amendment um, to the bill would help ensure that PBM reforms are working as intended by increasing transparency. We need to call for the amendment. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, will the clerk will distribute the amendment to all members? And will the clerk designate the amendment? Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to H.R. 6283 as offered by Mr. Raskin of Maryland. Without objection, the amendment is considered as read. I, I reserve a point of order. Uh, the gentleman from Maryland is recognized for five minutes to explain his amendment. Mr. Chairman, thank you. The purpose of the amendment is to make sure that the PBM reforms work as intended by increasing transparency around their business models. The amendment would require PBMs and health plans to disclose relevant information to federal employee health benefits program carriers, FEHB program carriers, as determined by OPM. OPM would determine which information would help the carriers negotiate the best health care coverage and prescription drug costs for federal employees and promulgate reporting requirements through the federal rulemaking process. Chairman Comer, I think you and I agree that if PBMs are working as intended, they serve an important role, an important role in negotiating lower drug costs and ensuring patients can get the medications they need. And I think we also agree that we have a drug affordability and accessibility crisis in the country. And the current way PBMs operate is playing a role in exacerbating it. But despite this committee's efforts to engage on the subject and hold substantive hearings, Congress and Americans still do not have a complete understanding of how PBM practices operate and how they may be contributing to high prescription drug costs and reduced accessibility to medic medication. I have in my possession a fact sheet from the sponsoring office, Representative Miller Meeks, um, of the Drug Act. And while I commend the legislative motivations behind the bill, it's unclear how much evidence there is to support claims that the bill will, quote, increase coverage of lower cost alternatives, including generics and biosimilars, and generate savings for employers and 
plan sponsors. I share those goals, and I want to be sure that the bill will actually achieve them. But it's hard to be sure that the changes proposed will accomplish those objectives if the features of PBM operations remain shrouded in secrecy and darkness. Although we've heard that practices like rebate negotiation and spread pricing may increase costs for patients while enriching PBMs without an understanding of the remuneration PBMs may obtain from rebates, fees, and other discounts, and from practices like spread pricing, we don't have complete insight into the ways in which PBM practices may be a contributing factor, factor of our drug affordability crisis. It's clear we need increased transparency within the PBM market to make sure Congress and the people understand the role they play in our very complex, needlessly complex, healthcare system. With this understanding, Congress can enact more effective policy solutions. In fact, in a memo requested by the sponsor of this bill, Ellis Health Policy specifically said combining delinking, as this bill would do, along with greater transparency, which is the purpose of my amendment, we would be generating additional savings and reducing premiums. And this should be a bipartisan commitment. In fact, the Lower Costs, More Transparency Act that was passed by the House in December with bipartisan support included significant reporting requirements for health plans and PBMs meant to shed light on the inner workings of the PBMs. But that bill did not apply to the federal health benefits program. My amendment to this bill models the House passed language in the Lower Costs, More Transparency Act and would require PBMs to report similar information to carriers that participate in the federal health benefits program as determined by OPM. For example, the Lower Costs, More Transparency Act requires PBMs to report information related to PBM spending on drugs dispensed to patients, the amount reimbursed by PBMs to pharmacies for dispensing those drugs, and the remuneration received by the PBM from drug manufacturers. By having a better understanding of PBM within the healthcare supply chain, FHB carriers will be better informed to ensure that patients will end up coming out on top. I urge my colleagues to support the amendment. I yield back to you, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman yields back. Would the ranking member engage in a friendly colloquy? Uh, yes, by all means. I appreciate the ranking member's proposal to bring greater PBM transparency to the federal employees' health benefit market. I've long been a supporter of PBM transparency and believe it's one of the best ways we can reduce the cost of prescription drugs for all of our constituents. Transparency was a central proposed solution during the hearings this committee has held on the impact of PBMs on prescription drug prices. State attorneys general in Ohio, Columbia, Utah, Texas, and others have filed lawsuits and open investigations into uh, the anti-competitive practices of PBMs. State legislatures across the country have passed legislation preventing some of their anti-competitive practices and requiring transparency in pricing and contracts. I know Kentucky did that. Finally, the dam is breaking here in the nation's capital. While I have some concerns that the ranking member's amendment would cause confusion rather than transparency, I appreciate his proposal and agree with the goals. So I would commit to working with the ranking member to draft comprehensive PBM transparency within uh, the federal, the FEHB, if he were willing to withdraw the amendment, engage with my staff on drafting a separate standalone bill to address that. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's acceptable to me, and I would look forward, I, I withdraw the amendment, and I look forward to working with you on that comprehensive transparency legislation. Thank you. We will uh, begin talks at the conclusion of this hearing. Thank you. Does any other member wish to be recognized for the purpose of an amendment? Ms. Crockett? Greg, uh, oh, oh, okay. For what? So, so, Mr. Lynch. Hmm? Mr. Lynch. Oh, Mr. Lynch. Okay. For what purpose does Mr. Lynch seek recognition? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I believe I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will distribute the amendment to all members. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment to the amendment. <laughs>